In Rewind 2005, you are competing against each other and against the clock. When the game begins, the category teaser screen appears, and a player is designated to choose the category for the first challenge. The categories are pop culture, places, words and song, movies, events, TV, sports, politics, people, and science. And because this is Rewind 2005, all the questions are connected to the year 2005. If it's your turn, your name will appear here at the top left corner of the screen. Select the category you want by scrolling and selecting using the cursor buttons on your remote. The teaser will hint as to that specific category's subject matter. As soon as you have made your selection, the game is on. All players get to answer the rewind question using their individual remotes, and all players are playing for a maximum of 900 points per question. When you think you know the answer, make your choice from the options provided by pressing A, B, C, or D at the top of your remote. When you enter your answer, a color bar the same as your remote's color will appear here at the bottom of the screen. If you change your mind, you can change your answer by using one of your retakes. Press your new answer choice and an extension to your color bar will appear on screen. You can do this only once per question. As the question progresses, a series of clues provides you with more information, making your choice easier. But remember, the longer you wait to answer, the fewer points you'll receive. If you answer incorrectly, you will receive no points. When the time is up, the answer is revealed, followed by a scoreboard. At this point, you can proceed to the next challenge by pressing the Next button. Or, if you'd like to watch the question a second time, you can press the Replay button. All players are provided with five retakes at the start of each game. You use these to correct your answer, but also as point-getters. They are redeemable at game's end for 300 points each, so the more you have, the more you can cash in. Use them wisely. The player with the lowest total score chooses next, and if their point total exceeds 500 on that question, they receive a bonus retake. Interspersed in each game are bonus features in Rewind, true or false, and news or not. For true or false, you are asked to decide if a fact presented to you is true or if we made it up, and we ask you to bet on it. If you are not sure, bet the minimum 300 points. If you're pretty sure, wager 600. And if you are all but certain, lay down the maximum 900. Be careful, however, if wrong, you are penalized that number of points. After the last player has wagered, indicated by a color-coded triangle, play begins. The game will wait until all players have entered their choice before giving the answer. News or Not asks you to discern which of three outrageous headlines actually appeared in a real news story. Again, we ask you to wager 300, 600 or 900 points. The player who combines the best gameplay with the best strategy has the best chance at winning. And that's Rewind 2005. Have fun! As a teenager, this comedian performed at the Apollo Theater in Harlem, where he was booed off the stage. That must have made him gun-shy, because he turned down the role of Bubba in Forrest Gump, thinking the film would be a bomb. Based on a skit that achieved cult status, he was in talks to play Rick James in a biopic film, but they fell through just before James died. When asked to run for president by a fan, he responded, You want me to be president? I can't even do three seasons on cable. After signing a $50 million deal with Comedy Central to produce a third season of his hit show, Dave Chappelle walked away from the deal. It's been a wild year for me, he said. I'm hurting. Don't think you can walk away from $50 million and your wife is cool with it.
In an effort to reduce traffic chaos, motorists pay a congestion charge of up to $22 per day for driving into this city. Over 300 languages are spoken there, making it the most linguistically diverse city in the world. On January 1, 2005, it boasted a population of 7.5 million, making it the second most populous city in the European Union. A part of British history has disappeared. The ubiquitous red double-decker bus known as the Routemaster was retired in December 2005. And probably not a moment too soon. At least three people a year died after falling off its unique hop-on, hop-off rear platform. After regretting appearing topless in a 1970s movie, this actress bought up all prints of the film and deleted the incriminating scene. In the 90s, she was lampooned by the South Park guys, who transformed her into a giant robot seeking world domination. In the 80s, the Bee Gees Barry Gibb wrote, produced, and sang on her multi-platinum album, Guilty. And in 2005, they hooked up again, recreating that success, collaborating on Guilty Pleasures. The highest earning dead celebrity was none other than Peanuts creator Charles Schultz, who, despite passing away in 2000, earned $35 million. Place your bets. Let's play. False! Charles was a close second behind none other than the King Elvis Presley, whose 2005 take was $45 million. Cumulatively, the all-time top celebrity moneymaker is Shakespeare, whose 400-year-old plays, if they were still under copyright, would earn about $50 million a year. He was the first ever nominee for three Golden Globe Acting Awards in the same year. One of those nods was for playing death row inmate and Nobel Prize nominee Stan Tookie Williams. His second nomination was for appearing opposite Tom Cruise in the thriller Collateral. And the third, and his only win, was for playing the legendary Ray Charles in Ray, which was also an Oscar-winning performance. Not only did Fox play his own piano in Ray, but he wore eye prosthetics that made him blind for up to 14 hours a day during shooting. Accepting the 2005 Mark Twain Prize, he said it was the only significant American award for comedy, except for money. An earlier nod to his comic talent was his 1969 Emmy as a writer on the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. 
He also has several Grammys for his two best-selling comedy albums of all time and for his banjo playing in the Earl Scruggs video of Foggy Mountain Breakdown. He adapted his own best-selling novella, Shop Girl, into a 2005 film of the same name in which he starred along with Claire Danes. Receiving the Twain honor, Martin said, When I look at the list of people given this award, it makes me satisfied. When I see the list of those who haven't been given the award, it makes me even more satisfied. Which of these headlines is true? Clinton offered 40 goats and 20 cows for Chelsea. NBA players call ban on swearing racist. New reality series, Bringing Up Bambi. Place Let's your bets. Play. Former U.S. President Bill Clinton was indeed offered 40 goats and 20 cows for his daughter by a love-struck Kenyan government official during his 2005 trip to Africa. By Kenya's standards, the dowry was considered a very generous one. This show's main theme music is actually a snippet from Cozy and the Rocket by Sap, a band that likes to make songs with little noises poking out. The domineering resident doctor on the show is referred to by most of the other characters as the Nazi. The Chicago Tribune named the show's creator, Shonda Rhimes, as a Chicagoan of the Year in 2005, crediting her with having discovered the next Friends. The show's title is a play on the name of the classic and still authoritative med school textbook written by Henry Gray and first published in 1858. Despite its popularity in 2005, detractors have criticized the series for its medical inaccuracies and exaggerations. Beginning with season two, ABC Network's website for the show started running a segment which explained the science behind the patient's cases. Struggling to climb a track fence after a 2005 victory, he realized he was too fat and spent 17 grand on exercise equipment. Known for his bad attitude, at the start of the 2005 season, his Joe Gibbs racing team informed him he either had to change or leave. He changed. That year, he won almost $14 million, the largest single season money total in NASCAR history. He also won his second NASCAR Nextel Cup championship, joining Jeff Gordon as the only active drivers to have won multiple championships. Stewart doesn't like driving much, unless it's in a race car. He said that if he had to drive the length of a Nextel Cup race in a regular car without listening to music or stopping for a Coke, he would want to commit arson when he got out. A huge fan of the Grateful Dead, she said she attended at least 67 concerts, but lost interest after Jerry Garcia died. She was heckled off the stage during a December speech at the University of Connecticut. A year earlier, she was almost creamed by two custard pies thrown by Arizona students. Hired by USA Today to cover the Democratic Convention, she was fired after submitting her first column which began, Here at the Spawn of Satan Convention, 
She said her photo on the April 25th cover of Time was unflattering and looked like an elongated funhouse picture, blaming a biased liberal media for portraying her as unattractive. In 2005, she was a commentator on the Discovery Channel's 100 Greatest Americans, the show that unveiled Ronald Reagan as the person most Americans admire. Once asked for her list, Coulter also named Reagan, but added Joe McCarthy, J. Edgar Hoover, and Richard Nixon. During a military parade at the Sandhurst Royal Military Academy, Britain's Prince Harry was forced to drop his trousers for an inspection. Place your bets. Let's play. True. He was ordered by his sergeant to confirm the rumor that the prince had his girlfriend, Chelsea Davies' name, tattooed on his royal rear. Nestled close to those of Buster Crabbe and John Travolta, his star is the 1900th on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In the 60s, he used to put on a disguise and hang out at rock concerts by Santana and the Grateful Dead. During a 1969 TV special, comedian Woody Allen asked him, What's your favorite commandment? His final crusade took place in June of 2005 when he preached to a crowd of 90,000 at Flushing Meadows, New York. At those concerts in the 60s, Billy Graham would get on stage, take off his disguise, and invite concert goers to get high without hang-ups and hangovers on Jesus. Astrologer Marina Bai sued NASA for $300 million over this mission, alleging it would violate the natural balance of the universe. Following its January 05 launch, this spacecraft took 174 days to reach its destination, cruising at a speed of 64,000 miles per hour. Its destination, Comet Temple 1, was discovered in 1867, and its eccentric orbit sees it pass through our solar system every five and a half years. NASA smashed this spacecraft into Temple 1 on the 4th of July, making it the first ever man-made interstellar fireworks show. The impactor portion of the spacecraft hit the comet with a bang equivalent to 4.5 tons of TNT, enough to excavate a crater larger than the bowl of the Roman Colosseum. The purpose of the deep impact mission was to study the interior of a comet's nucleus. She revealed on Inside the Actor's Studio that her favorite sound was her dog's tail pounding the floor whenever she walked into the room. She paid her dues early in her career with small parts in films like Reality Bites and Return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. She won an Oscar in 2004 for her portrayal of Ruby in Cold Mountain, and in 2005 she played Jim Braddock's wife May in Cinderella Man. Also in 2005, she played a wife in real life, marrying country music singer Kenny Chesney in a 15-minute ceremony. Unfortunately, Zellweger's marriage lasted only four months, 
Reportedly, the two ended the relationship after it was revealed Chesney did not want to have children. In January 2005, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice included this country in her list of the six outposts of tyranny. The military government's savage repression of its citizens' peaceful uprising became the backdrop for the 90s film Beyond Rangoon. Aung San Suu Kyi, whose election as Prime Minister was nullified in 1990, has spent 10 of the past 15 years under arrest in this country formerly known as Burma. In November, Suu Kyi's house arrest was extended for yet another year. U2's Bono, who wrote Walk On For Her, has described the Nobel Peace Prize laureate as my hero. The military regime loaded up scores of trucks with personnel and furniture in 2005, moving the nation's capital from Rangoon to the remote town of Pienmana. Analysts suggested the move could have been the result of astrological advice. In the 2005 GQ magazine Man of the Year issue, this rapper described George W. Bush as incredible, a gangster. He went on to say, I want to meet George Bush, just shake his hand and tell him how much of me I see in him. Canadian politicians weren't too fond of him in 2005. They tried unsuccessfully to stop the rapper from entering Canada because he promotes gun violence. They must have seen his 2005 releases, the film Get Rich or Die Tryin', or his aptly named video game, Bulletproof. In 2000, Curtis James Jackson, better known as 50 Cent or Fitty, was shot at nine times and hit three times, once in each leg and once in the jaw. Celebrity tooth veneers to make patient smiles resemble their favorite stars became Manhattan's hottest dental fan. Place your bets. Play. True. For between one and two thousand dollars, ladies could get the Halley, the Brittany, or the Gwyneth. For men, the most popular veneers were the Tom and the George. This eccentric actor once owned a clown portrait painted by notorious serial killer John Wayne Gacy. Eccentric and multi-talented, he played slide guitar on Fade In Out on the Oasis album Be Here Now. He paid for the 150-foot cannon in the shape of a fist clutching a peyote button from which Hunter S. Thompson's ashes were fired. His 2005 portrayal of Willy Wonka in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was reportedly based on the even more odd Michael Jackson. Depp said his Willy Wonka role was not in fact based on Jackson. Instead, he loosely based the character on the peculiar, reclusive, germaphobe billionaire Howard Hughes. This band's classically trained bassist and singer commented that Johann Sebastian Bach wrote the greatest bass lines ever. He and the drummer were in the Graham Bond organization. They fought constantly and sabotaged each other's equipment.
The lead guitarist co-wrote the song Badge with Beatle George Harrison. He later married George's first wife, Patty Boyd. Jack Bruce, Ginger Baker, and Eric Clapton were at the top of their form in 1968, but split up due to infighting. In 2005, scalpers demanded upwards of $6,500 per ticket to the three Cream Reunion concerts at Madison Square Gardens. Which of these headlines is true? Secret Service doesn't find Bin Laden Halloween costume funny. Latest hair care craze, cat pee. Aussie forklift driver is heir to the British throne. Place your bets. Play. Genealogists insist Australian forklift operator Mike Hastings is the rightful heir to the British throne. Extensive research has concluded Hastings' ancestors were cheated out of the crown in the 15th century, meaning he should rightfully be the British head of state. Said Hastings, I reckon I might send Lizzie a bill for back rent. This Cambridge graduate learned Buffon, the venerable court jester's art, under the French clowning guru Philippe Goulier, who also taught Roberto Benigni. In a Robin Williams-esque performance, he played the voice of King Julian the Lemur in the 2005 animated movie Madagascar. In character as the sexist Kazakhstani reporter Borat, he crashed a beachside marriage ceremony between two of Pamela Anderson's dogs in an inflatable turtle-shaped raft. Though his characters on the Ali G show are criticized as racist, HBO compares it to All in the Family as an obvious satire that exposes people's ignorance and prejudice. The government of Kazakhstan was so offended by Borat that in November of 2005 they placed a four-page ad defending the country in the New York Times. Evidently, in Kazakhstan, women are not kept in cages. And their popular equestrian sport, Catch a Bride, does not result in actual matrimony, just a kiss. ESPN's John Saunders described him as pound for pound the greatest basketball player he had ever seen. In 2005, he became the first American player to announce that he wants to be part of the U.S. basketball team for the 2008 Olympics. For Team USA's disastrous performance at the 2004 Olympics in Athens, Greece, he served as co-captain. In 2005, he was a vocal opponent of the mandatory non-hip-hop dress code for all NBA players, asking the league to pay for the new clothes. Iverson, who made more than $16 million for the 2005 season, wants to atone for his display in Greece. The heavily favored American team only managed to win bronze, and Iverson was benched during a game after being late to a practice. This American politician said to Dick Cheney, Mr. Vice President, I wouldn't keep you if it weren't constitutionally required. His potential presidential run was cut short in 1988, after it was revealed that he had failed a course in law school due to plagiarism. Later, it was demonstrated that he had copied several campaign speeches, most notably those of Senator Robert F. Kennedy. 
Undaunted, he announced he would run for president in 08, stating on The Daily Show that he would like John McCain as his opponent, or, better yet, his running mate. Biden, who has become famous for his candor, described a meeting he had with President Bush in the Oval Office. At least I make strong decisions. I lead, said Bush, to which Biden responded, Mr. President, look behind you. Leaders have followers. No one's following. The stick insect has the shortest recorded reproductive act in nature, lasting a total of one three hundredth of a second. Place your Let's bets. Play. False. In fact, the act goes on for several months, according to University of Arizona biologist John Alcock, who made the discovery in August of 2005. He did say, however, that it's not clear this is welcome to the female. Forbes magazine ranked her 10th on their 100 most powerful women in the world list for 2005. After Hurricane Katrina, she said, We have to address the inequities that were not created by the hurricanes, but exposed by them. Both media savvy and media wary, she said, We have to be careful in how we use this light shined on us. She, along with her husband Bill and U2 frontman Bono, were named Time Magazine's Persons of the Year for 2005. Time praised the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and their $29 billion in donations for giving more money away faster than anyone ever has. From 1870 to 1880, about 50 of these sea-dwelling creatures washed up on the shores of Newfoundland. No one knows why. They are thought to have the largest eyes of any living thing, measuring one foot in diameter. In fiction, they battle with James Bond and Captain Nemo. Scientists believe they are simply drifters eating whatever happens to float by. Until 2004, only dead specimens had been studied. That's because they couldn't be watched in their natural habitat. On September 27, 2005, Japanese researchers released the first images of a live giant squid. Taken at a depth of nearly 3,000 feet, the 500 photographs revealed a squid aggressively attacking its prey. Apparently, it's not such a drifter after all. The hotels in this theme park don't have fourth floors because in the local language, four and death sound too similar. The nearly billion dollar creation is served by the world's first train route exclusively dedicated to a theme park. Public pressure forced it to take the local delicacy, shark fin soup, off the wedding banquet menu. Activists weren't so delicate when they picketed the 2005 opening, saying Disney was exploiting Chinese labor. Disney hired feng shui masters to help design Hong Kong Disneyland to ensure maximum serenity. 
However, since the September opening, they've had issues with their mainland China guests who smoke and spit everywhere and let their children urinate in the flower beds. The origin for the name of this city is either from the Persian for God-given or from the Aramaic phrase for sheep enclosure. <laughs> Many of the events in the Book of 1001 Nights were set here, including Aladdin's Lamp and Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves. Babylonian bricks bearing the royal seal of King Nebuchadnezzar were found on the banks of the Tigris River where this city was built. It was also here where the statue of Saddam Hussein was pulled down on live TV while U.S. troops entered the city unopposed. The trial of Saddam Hussein for crimes against humanity began in October of 2005 and was held in a courtroom specially built in his own former presidential palace complex in Baghdad. This film is loosely based on the memoir, See No Evil, by former CIA agent Robert Baer, who also shot a cameo scene in the movie. Because of the film's length, all of Michelle Monaghan's scenes were cut. The same thing happened to her in the 2005 film, Constantine. With over 70 speaking roles, someone had to go, but George Clooney, also an executive producer, was pretty likely to make the final cut. Clooney used a pasta-rich diet to put on 35 pounds for the role, but refused to shave his head for fear that his hair might not grow back. According to writer and director Stephen Gagan, Syriana is a very real term used by Washington think tanks to describe a hypothetical reshaping of the Middle East. In 2005, Bin Laden Perfume made its retail debut in both Europe and North America. Place your bets. Let's play. Fall! Yeslam Bin Laden, one of Osama's 53 siblings, did introduce new floral fragrances for both men and women at $30 an ounce. But the products bear his first rather than last name. He was such a poor high school student, he ran for class president and won because he said, you can't flunk the class president. <laughs> he was banned from all bars in downtown Wilmington, North Carolina after a 2001 bar brawl that ended with Steve Buscemi being stabbed. He reprised the role of Norman Bates in the shot-for-shot -shot remake of Alfred Hitchcock's classic, Psycho. In 2005, he made the tabloids with rumors of a romance with Jennifer Aniston while filming The Breakup. Vince Vaughn was in two of the top grossing movies of 2005, Wedding Crashers and Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and is considered the leader of the frat pack, which includes Will Ferrell, Jack Black, Ben Stiller, and Owen and Luke Wilson.
In 2005, the prospect of seeing her compete in a pumpkin regatta resulted in a Nova Scotia tourism boom. She agreed to join in a race across that Canadian province's Lake Pesquid in a locally grown 600-pound PVC personal vegetable carrier. Initially denied entry to Canada due to her convict status, at the 11th hour she was granted a special permit to attend the race. It was rain that grounded her plane in Maine, forcing associate producer Marianne Vanderventer to race in her place. Local organizers described Stewart's cancellation as a shock and disappointing. Stewart echoed those sentiments when her 2005 TV show, The Apprentice Martha Stewart, was cancelled due to terrible ratings. Which of these headlines is true? Carmen Electra sold on eBay. Tomatoes are nature's Viagra. Baby gets barcode. Place Let's your bets. Play. The ex-Baywatch actress put herself up for sale for an evening for charity in May of 2005. The date sold for $407,500, with the money going to the National Prostate Cancer Coalition. During the first 18 months of production, seven stars of this show were pulled over for speeding or drunk driving. Rushed into production, it was first pitched in January of 2004, and its pilot episode aired in September of that same year. Putting shows to air quickly must cost a lot of money, because its pilot episode was the most expensive in television history. It wasn't cheap importing a smashed up Lockheed L-1011 from an airplane graveyard in Las Vegas and dropping it on Makulea Beach in Hawaii. Lost star Dominic Monaghan said, The reason we get speeding tickets is there are only three roads in Hawaii, so if there's a police officer on any one of those roads, they're going to get us. At the age of 16, she gave up her dream of being a tennis professional and took up golf instead. Chronically shy, after winning the 1995 US Open, she reportedly became so emotionally exhausted she stayed in bed for nearly a week. A 60 Minutes feature revealed she would intentionally lose tournaments as a junior to avoid making victory speeches. She says playing against the men on the PGA Tour, and missing the cut, is her proudest accomplishment in golf. In 2005, Annika Sorenstam won her eighth money title, finishing more than a million dollars ahead of the field. The five lowest single season scoring averages in LPGA history are the averages for Sorenstam from 2000 to 2005. He said he resigned in the best interest of the agency and best interest of the president. Later, many questions arose about his resume. Due to many lawsuits against him, he had also been forced to resign his previous job with the International Arabian Horse Association, where he was known as the Tsar. 
After 2004's Hurricane Francis, he sent $30 million in federal disaster relief funds to Miami, a city that had not been affected by the storm. On the day Hurricane Katrina struck New Orleans, the head of FEMA jokingly wrote an email saying, Can I quit now? Can I go home? When his only staff member in New Orleans emailed him to say that the situation was past critical and many would die, Brown wrote back, Thanks for the update. Anything specific I need to do or tweak? Two days later, President Bush told him, Brownie, you're doing a heck of a job. The nuclear reactor that inspired the accident-prone plant on The Simpsons is being converted into a state park. Place your bets. Play. True. The grounds of the Trojan nuclear plant in Oregon are being transformed into a pristine playground where families can commune with nature in the shadow of the towering concrete cooling tower. In August, a blood-stained bandage from a head wound he suffered was sold on eBay to CasinoPalace.com for $10,000. A former Israeli general, he received the wound battling the Egyptians in the 1973 Yom Kippur War. A reputation as a reckless military hawk would follow him into his political career. In the 80s, as housing minister, he oversaw the buildup of Israeli settlements in Gaza and the West Bank. In 2005, as prime minister, he orchestrated their evacuation. With his right-wing Likud party challenging both the withdrawal and his leadership, he resigned in order to form his own centrist party, Kadima, the Hebrew word for forward. By the end of 2005, he was being hailed as a peacemaker and the best hope for a solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. But a minor stroke in December was followed a few weeks later by a massive stroke, abruptly ending the era of Ariel Sharon. George W. Bush said, We could not accept a treaty that would not have been ratified, nor a treaty that I thought made sense for the country. Speaking at an international conference in 2005, Bill Clinton said the Bush administration was flat out wrong regarding its stance on this document. Dennis Quaid played climatologist Jack Hall in the doomsday film The Day After Tomorrow. America's rejection of this drove the film's plot. Australia and the U.S. are the only two nations not to sign the treaty designed to limit greenhouse gases. First conceived in Japan in 97, it came into effect on February 16, 2005. The United States, the world's largest emitter of the five greenhouse gases, refused to ratify the agreement, saying it would wreck the economy and is flawed by its lack of restrictions on emissions by China and India. At a gig in Denmark, he was pelted with garbage and chairs after giving the wrong shout-out, Belgium, make some noise! This rapper had to call on the services of OJ's super attorney, the late Johnny Cochran, who passed away in 2005. Not only did he lose girlfriend Jennifer Lopez, but he was charged for weapons violations and bribing a witness. Cochran managed to beat the charges. It was August of 2005 when he announced on the Today Show that the P in his name was getting between him and his fans. Katie Couric's only response was, wow. Previously
Previously known as Puff Daddy, Puffy, Puff, and P. Diddy, he is now simply Diddy. He says, Diddy is a little bit more personal. I've let down my guard. I'm fully exposed. I'm going to start talking in a third person everything. In his 2005 book, The Universe in a Single Atom, he wrote that instead of being created by a Big Bang, the universe is infinite and beginningless. In April of that year, Time magazine put him on its list of the world's 100 most influential people in its Heroes and Icons section. Yet in 2005, if you tried to look up his name on the Chinese versions of Yahoo or MSN, the results would have been blocked. Also that year, China blocked his return to Tibet, denying him the chance to celebrate his 70th birthday in the land of his birth. The Dalai Lama is confident he will again set foot in Tibet in his lifetime. However, China has made it clear that there is no chance of his returning home until he publicly declares that both Tibet and Taiwan are part of China. This icon has been credited on albums as Apollo C. Vermouth, Percy Thrills Thrillington, Bernard Webb, and The Fireman. He says one of his best-known songs began with temporary lyrics, Scrambled Eggs, Oh My Baby, How I Love Your Legs. His wife did a lot of work for a PETA campaign during New York Fashion Week, protesting the use of fur by retailers like J.Lo and J. Crew. Also in 2005, he played in the London Live 8 concert, later returning to close the show after the Pink Floyd reunion. Sir Paul never seems to tire. In September, he released and started touring his new album, Chaos and Creation in the Backyard. And in October, he launched a children's book called High in the Clouds, an urban furry tale. U.S. military-trained dolphins carrying toxic dart guns were accidentally released by Hurricane Katrina. Place your bets. Play. False! Although eight civilian dolphins were swept out from their aquarium, none had frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. The Pentagon released a statement saying there were no military-trained dolphins in Louisiana, only in San Diego. This actress was discovered at a New York pizza parlor by a Revlon Cosmetics rep when she was 11 years old. Fluent in five languages and a Harvard grad, her professor, Alan Dershowitz, called her an academic superstar. Born in Jerusalem, she upset some of her hometown bystanders by filming a kissing scene near the Western Wall in 2005. Sporting a shaved head at the 2005 Star Wars Episode 3 premiere, she also received her first Oscar nomination that year for Closer. Portman shaved her head for her role in the 2006 film V for Vendetta, but her long-term plans are not to remain an actor. Instead, she intends to return to the academic life and become a doctor.
This news anchor once remarked, Americans will put up with anything provided it doesn't block traffic. Covering 1961's Hurricane Carla, he put the first live radar image of a hurricane on TV. His assault at the hands of a man who asked, Kenneth, what is the frequency inspired an REM hit? His last night as CBS Evening News anchor in 2005 was exactly 24 years after his first night. On stepping down as anchor, Rather returned to the field where he had originally distinguished himself as the first journalist to report that President John F. Kennedy had died of wounds received from an assassin. Which of these headlines is true? Weatherman claims Japanese Mafia behind Hurricane Katrina. Rapper 50 Cent to produce high fashion bulletproof vests. Dog digs tunnel into prison. Owner escapes. Place your bets. Let's play. After looking at NASA's satellite photos, Scott Stevens, a TV weatherman, was convinced Katrina was caused by electromagnetic generators from ground-based microwave transmitters that the Russians sold to the Yakuza in the late 1980s. He took a leave of absence to prove it. His station manager did not protest. Al Sharpton made two guest appearances in the first season of this TV spin-off. In 1999, series creator David E. Kelly won outstanding series Emmys for both Ally McBeal and The Practice. In 2005, James Spader and William Shatner each won Emmys for this series. The year before, they both won for playing the same roles in another show. It has been jokingly referred to as the sixth Star Trek spin-off, in which Kirk and Odo from Deep Space Nine go back in time to become lawyers. In one joking reference to Star Trek, Spader, as Alan Shore, complains about parasitic sea lice that cling on to wild salmon. As Denny Crane, Shatner recoils in horror. Did you say Klingons? In 1960, this team became the first in all of the major sports to put players' last names on its jerseys. They were a force in the American League during the early 20th century, winning four of the first 19 pennants. But the team's fortunes dropped after it became involved in what is considered to be the greatest scandal in the history of the sport. They ended the shoeless Joe Jackson curse in 2005 when they won their first World Series championship since 1917. The film Field of Dreams romanticized the story of shoeless Joe because he hit 375 in the 1919 World Series. But Jackson admitted in his grand jury testimony that he helped throw it for $20,000, a sum three times his annual salary.
In 2003, his death was incorrectly announced when a pre-written obituary was inadvertently published on CNN's website. Commenting on the violence in Iraq on Larry King Live in May of 2005, he said, I think they're in the last throes, if you will, of the insurgency. Using Google Earth's satellite imaging software in 2005, you could view satellite photos of the Pentagon, the Capitol, and the White House, but his house was intentionally blurred. On the morning of June 29, 2002, he became only the second man in history to serve as an acting U.S. president while George W. Bush was undergoing a colonoscopy. Cheney will be the first vice president since Nelson Rockefeller not to run for president, stating emphatically, if nominated, I will not run. If elected, I will not serve. I'm going to serve this president, and then I'm out of here. A new Mexican theme park opened, allowing visitors to simulate the experience of migrant workers attempting to illegally cross the U.S. border. Place your bets. Play. True. In El Alberto, Mexico, potential emigrants to the United States could test themselves in an extensive obstacle course. The cost of this rehearsal for a better life? About $13. Save the world. A 1981 song by George Harrison praised the efforts of this non-governmental organization. Co-founder Bob Hunter, who died in March, was the architect of the group's use of media mind bombs, where images and sounds were used to impact the global consciousness. In July, it urged U.S. consumers to buy Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince from Canadian publisher Raincoast Books, which had used 100% recycled paper. But the headlines it made in October were somewhat embarrassing, after its flagship Rainbow Warrior 2 accidentally destroyed pristine coral reef in the central Philippines. Spearheaded by Hunter, in 1971, Greenpeace activists rented a fishing boat and sailed into the waters of Anchitka, Alaska to protest U.S. nuclear testing in the unspoiled wilderness. This first use of peaceful but direct interference became the group's hallmark. Amenities in its upper-class cabin include a bed, a bar, your own private cinema, and in-flight beauty treatments. In December, it announced its new space tourism business to be headquartered at a New Mexico spaceport. Flights will cost $200,000. This inventive airline also financed the Global Flyer, the plane in which pilot Steve Fawcett made the first non-stop, solo, round-the-world flight in March 2005. Company President Richard Branson is now awaiting the 08 delivery of six Airbus A380s, the mammoth jet that had its maiden flight in April. The Airbus A380, which is the largest passenger plane ever built, can seat up to 840 economy passengers. But Branson has far different plans for its spacious interior, including a gym, private double beds, and an onboard casino. In college, this actor was so poor, he sold his blood for money and worked at General Foods sweeping Cheerios dust from the floor. 
He landed a role as a cowboy surfer in a pilot called Wind on Water, but turned the role down because he didn't want to appear stupid. That same day, he did accept a stupid role in another pilot called Teenage Wasteland, which went to air as That 70s Show. Not many thought the 27-year-old actor was dumb when he married the 42-year-old Demi Moore in 2005. Ashton Kutcher is a far cry from the dim-witted Michael Kelso on that 70s show. In fact, he was studying biochemical engineering at the University of Iowa before dropping out to become a model and actor. This city's name is not unique, considering there are others in the states of New York, Maryland, and Oregon. But this particular city's residents perspire enough to fill two soda cans on an average summer day. That's according to a 2005 survey by Old Spice Deodorant, which designated it the country's sweatiest city. Of 100 cities, this Arizona destination ranked the hottest, with its average summer temperatures of 100 degrees. The name Phoenix refers to the mythical bird who, consumed by fire, rises from its ashes reborn. In the Navajo language, the city is called Hudzo, which means the place is hot. As at Ben Clan, this band's first album was never released due to their record label feeling their positive themes weren't marketable. Their song, Let's Get Retarded, was changed to the less offensive, Let's Get It Started, for use in a worldwide NBA commercial. Despite their single Shut Up being described as the single most vacuous, pointless, vile, and generally loathsome song in a generation, it became a major hit for band members Will I Am, Apple the App, Taboo, and their new vocalist Fergie. The band's name took on an ironic twist in 2005 when Fergie confessed to accidentally urinating while on stage during a concert in Australia. She promptly doused herself with champagne to disguise the fact and just kept on singing. The mayor of Las Vegas recommended that graffiti artists have their thumbs cut off on live TV. Place your Let's bets. Play. True. Mayor Oscar Goodman publicly stated, put them on TV and cut off a thumb. I'm dead serious. Adding, some of these punks don't learn. You have got to teach them a lesson. And this is coming from a criminal defense lawyer. He later added that there would be a trial first. A self-described libertarian, he has opposed the Americans with Disabilities Act and publicly threatened to kill Michael Moore. This movie veteran began his career taking bit parts in B-films such as Revenge of the Creature and Tarantula. A false rumor that has plagued him throughout his career is that he's the son of comedian Stan Laurel. At 
the age of 74, he brought his 96-year-old mother to the 2005 Academy Awards. He commented, I'm just a kid. Clint Eastwood's Million Dollar Baby won numerous awards in 2005, including Best Picture, Best Actress for Hilary Swank, and Best Supporting Actor for Morgan Freeman. Eastwood's win for Best Director made him that category's oldest winner of all time. Folk singer David Rovick's song about this radical group contains the line, There's nothing quite so lovely as a Walmart on fire. They have carried out attacks against companies involved in logging, genetic engineering, home building, automobile sales, and energy production. In Michael Crichton's 2004 book, State of Fear, a group with the same initials is responsible for wreaking environmental terror. As of 2005, no one was physically harmed by their actions, but a lot of hummers were. They paint the letters ELF as their calling card. Supporters of the ELF often deny that they are a terrorist group and claim to disavow harming any living being. Yet in 2005, they were classified as the number one domestic terrorist group by the FBI. Which of these headlines is true? High unemployment could harm recovery. Steak to be grown in a petri dish. Grocery store fined for selling roadkill. Place your bay. Researchers developed a new technique in 2005, which they claim could be the answer to the world's food shortage. Lumps of meat would be cultured in laboratory vats rather than carved from livestock raised on a farm. In 2005, this veteran actor was nominated for a Best Supporting Oscar, a Best Supporting Emmy, and a Tony, but he lost all three. He got over the Emmy loss quickly, presumably because it was his 29th nomination. He'd previously won five times. His father, Alfonso Giuseppe de Bruzzo, was also an actor, but he contracted the Alfonso and de Bruzzo for his stage name. His most famous role, Hawkeye Pierce, was based on a character in the novel M.A.S.H., but author Richard Hooker didn't approve of his portrayal. Alan Alda's great 2005 was topped off with the release of his best-selling memoir titled Never Have Your Dog Stuffed and Other Things I've Learned, which begins with the line, My mother didn't try to stab my father until I was six. A self-described hothead, his parents were once so mortified by his on-court behavior they refused to speak to him. His longtime coach was killed while on safari in Africa, and he used that as motivation to be a good player and a good man. His 2004 U.S. Open win marked the first time in the Open era that anyone had won their first four Grand Slam finals. Finishing 2005 ranked number one in the world, he said, It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Following his 2005 U.S. Open victory, Federer was 6-0 after reaching a Grand Slam final, a feat not duplicated in more than a century.
His hard-nosed anti-Castro stand was somewhat compromised when a time photographer snapped him enjoying a Cuban cigar. In an O2 TV interview, he expounded on why the U.S. must eliminate Saddam Hussein. We're no longer a superpower, we're a super-duper power. When no judicial body interceded in the Shivo case, he obliquely referred to their final judgment, warning that those responsible would one day answer for their behavior. The Hammer was forced to answer for his, following his indictment by a Texas grand jury on charges of money laundering. DeLay, who has already been admonished three times by the House Ethics Committee, was subsequently forced to step down as House Majority Leader. The two-year-old racehorse, Turd Blossom, placed second in the 2005 Kentucky Derby. Place your bay. False. Closing argument placed second. Turd Blossom is the nickname U.S. President George W. Bush assigned to his right-hand man, Carl Rowe. In the first Sherlock Holmes novel, A Study in Scarlet, the master detective traces the crime back to adherents of this founder's religion. Prior to achieving his ghoulish B-movie status, actor Vincent Price portrayed him in a 1940 film. In 1832, he was tarred and feathered by an angry mob. Twelve years later, just months after stating his candidacy for U.S. president, he was shot and killed by another angry mob. Revelations from God and the angel Moroni led him to the hidden golden tablets. His translation of this divine scripture provided the foundation for the Mormon church. 2005 marked the bicentennial of Joseph Smith's birth. Among the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints famous members, the Osmond family aside, are Orrin Hatch, Harry Reid, Jeopardy champ Ken Jennings, and Butch Cassidy. This famous ruler was married in his teens and had two children, both of whom were stillborn. It was widely speculated that he suffered from scoliosis and died of a chronic subdural hematoma. This was said to be the result of a murderous blow to the head. It turned out that he actually died of a broken leg. 1,700 images from CT scans revealed that he had suffered a swift attack of gangrene, a result of the injury. The scans of King Tut's mummy conducted in 2005 revealed he was 19 years old at the time of his death, he had a cleft palate, and that the hole in his head and crooked spine were most likely caused by embalmers. In 2005, it jumped from being the 200th most visited website in January to the 35th by December. Critics cited articles where a photo of Star Wars' Palpatine was labeled as Pope Benedict, and journalist John Seigenthaler was implicated in the Kennedy assassinations.
Encyclopedia, a web parody, quotes Winston Churchill as saying, This hat and congratulatory ham goes to France, who fought so poorly and surrendered so easily. A free online encyclopedia founded by Jimmy Wales, its entries are written by volunteers. Since anyone can edit the content, occasional acts of malice and vandalism may be inevitable. Despite the parodies and bouts of criticism concerning its credibility, an investigation by the weekly journal Nature revealed that Wikipedia's science articles were about as accurate as its venerable online competitor, Britannica. A song about the Polish goalkeeper of Liverpool's soccer team hit the top 10 in this Middle Eastern country in 2005. During his first official speech, its new ambassador to the U.S. criticized a 2005 American Dad episode for how it portrayed his country. Other than the Principality of Liechtenstein, it is the only country in the world named after a family. Non-Muslims were not allowed to attend the August 2, 2005 funeral of its ruler, King Fahd, head of the House of Saud for 23 years. King Fahd was one of the world's wealthiest and most extravagant monarchs, yet he was buried in an unmarked grave in a public cemetery in keeping with Saudi Arabia's strict code of Islam, known as Wahhabism. Excerpts from his recently rediscovered play, Beat Generation, were published in the June 2005 issue of Best Life magazine. Obsessed with Marlon Brando, he begged him to turn the play into a movie. When Brando passed, the script was shelved for the next 47 years. Meanwhile, his other 1957 work became so influential that keyboardist Ray Manzarek said The Doors would never have existed without it. That manuscript, On the Road, typewritten on a scroll of teletype paper, was bought by Jim Ursay, owner of the Indianapolis Colts, for over $2 million. Kerouac's famous 120-foot-long scroll manuscript, housed under glass in a gallery long enough to contain its full length, is missing its ending, which was, apparently, chewed by a dog. The DJ turned electronic musician Moby is related to the author of Moby Dick. Place your bet. Play. True. Moby, whose top selling album Hotel was released in 2005, was born Richard Melville Hall. The writer Herman Melville was his great 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 grand uncle. In Great Britain, this movie played continuously in the theaters from 1940 to 1947. Although he received no screen credit, F. Scott Fitzgerald was one of the writers brought in to help polish the script. As a member of the Ebenezer Baptist Church Choir, 10-year-old Martin Luther King Jr. performed at a gala ball honoring its premiere at Lowe's Grand Theater. Celebrating a hundred years of cinema, the American Film Institute selected Rhett's parting shot to Scarlet, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn, as the best movie line of all time. The Hollywood production code frowned on the use of the word damn. Producer David O. Selznick agreed to pay a $5,000 fine for its usage, thereby avoiding the proposed alternatives such as, I don't give a hoot, and it makes my bills rise.
A monument marking this tragic event includes this quote from the Little Prince, what is essential is invisible to the eye. It may have been the force, but the original Obi-Wan Kenobi, Sir Alec Guinness, had a premonition about this death. At the funeral in Fairmount, Indiana, the mourners outnumbered the town's population. In 2005, an Illinois auto museum offered a million dollars to anyone who turns in the wreckage of the poor spider he died in. 2005 marked the 50th anniversary of James Dean's death. The wrecked Porsche 550 Spider went missing during a 1958 tour of America promoting road safety. Its whereabouts remain unknown. Which of these headlines is true? Beer can house builder doesn't drink. Hitler tested small atom bomb. Department of Homeland Security to make alert colors friendlier. Place your Let's bets. Play. German historian Rainer Karlsch claimed in his 2005 book that Nazi scientists successfully tested a tactical nuclear weapon in the last months of World War II. This comic actor once hosted a game show where contestants and celebrities acted out scenes from classic films. After surviving the World War II Battle of Guadalcanal, he almost died of Blackwater fever. He was the voice of Inspector Gadget in the TV cartoon series, but never saw an episode. In 2005, the International Spy Museum exhibited his famous Get Smart Shoe Phone. When Don Adams died in 2005, the obituaries mainly touched on his role as the bumbling Maxwell Smart. When Get Smart began, Adams passed up an offer of a high weekly salary in favor of a percentage of the show's profits. Now that's smart. Pele once dubbed this soccer player the greatest footballer in the world. He made 466 appearances for Manchester United, scoring 178 goals, including six in one game. A crowd and media favorite, he became known as the fifth Beatle for his long hair, good looks, and celebrity lifestyle. That lifestyle led to problems with gambling and alcoholism, resulting in his being sacked by Manchester at what should have been his prime. In 2005, his funeral was the largest Northern Ireland had ever seen, with the route lined with more than 100,000 mourners. In 2004, she stated President Bush was sincere about wanting freedom for the Iraqis, and I know he's a man of faith. In December of 2005, Nobel laureate Dario Fo premiered his play, Peace Mom, based on extracts from her letters to President Bush. 
In August of 2005, both she and Lance Armstrong were in Crawford, Texas to meet with Bush. However, only one succeeded. During her vigil for her son Casey outside the Bush Ranch, she was informed she and her companions would be considered a threat to national security. A divisive force between the right and the left in 2005, during her stay at Camp Casey, thousands of Bush supporters rallied in Crawford as part of the You Don't Speak For Me, Sydney caravan. A Chinese company was established to sell land on the moon for 289 yuan, or the equivalent of $45 an acre. Place your bets. Let's play. True. After China launched Shenzhou 6 in 2005, China went space crazy. The Lunar Embassy started operations in Beijing, issuing customers a certificate that ensures property ownership, including rights to use the land and minerals. When she tried to enter the Hermes store in Paris with no makeup on, she was mistaken for a homeless person and denied entrance. On her show, Tiger Woods said he was Kaplan Asian, not black, and Mel Gibson smoked a cigarette. And Will Ferrell shared his belief that Nicole Kidman had a thing for his butt, while many thought Tom Cruise simply acted like one. All of these guests made Forbes Celebrity 100 list in 2005, but she was the only one at the top. According to Forbes, Oprah Winfrey is worth over 1.4 billion dollars. Maybe that gave her the confidence to end her 16-year feud with David Letterman, number 14 on the list, by appearing on his show on December 1st. As a child, one of the founders of this internet company built a programmable inkjet printer out of Lego. The combined salaries of the founders is a whopping $2 a year, but Forbes estimates their total net worth to be $22 billion. Their corporate philosophy is to do good things for the world, with the company code of conduct being, don't be evil. The unusual name is derived from the mathematical short form for a one followed by a hundred zeros. The Google guys are renowned for living frugally. They both drive a Toyota Prius and live in rented apartments. However, in 2005 they couldn't resist purchasing a very large passenger plane, a Boeing 767. 